This episode is brought to you by Fooly Gemstones. Welcome to If Jewels Could Talk. I'm Carol Wilton, the voice of jewellery. And today we've got a wonderful episode coming to you from China. So I thought we'd talk this morning. I'm very um, delighted to welcome Miss Du Yang, who is an ex Miss China. And she's an entrepreneur and she's an influencer and founder of many social media platforms. Yang, thank you very much for joining us from China today. Thank you, Kara. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, that's a pleasure. I can see, um, and our listeners will be able to see because we're going to put this on YouTube and our social media, that you've got some really beautiful earrings on this morning. <laughs> and you. I wanted to talk to you about Chinese style. So why don't we start with your earrings? Um, this uh, this uh, earring is a uh, special design by my friend Isme, uh, because I prefer uh, the jewelry that's more meaningful. This pair of earrings is commemorate the birth of my son and daughter. So the cre- uh, the whole creativity was hand by my best friend, and it also has the birth uh, birth uh, information of my children behind the earring. I can take it off. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, so the the main stone is peridot and the diamonds is all around. And uh, it's, uh, the, the gold cra- craftsmanship is like the sun because in, the, uh, chi- uh, in Chinese, yang means the sunshine. So that's what, I, uh, what my best friend think of me. So it's like sunshine and behind the earring is the little foot uh, footstep of my children so it's very meaningful oh, for me so nice. from my best friend yes. yes oh and and i guess that's the sunshine for you as your children yeah exactly you know the paradox is like um the uh Ghanese protection uh yeah aminate uh, aminate so they are just like to protect my children to the whole life mm-hmm. yeah so that's what you have on today. But I I wanted to know from you, Yang, is there what you would call a general young Chinese style right now? Mm-hmm. So I would say the young generation style is um, diversity because the logistics and uh, social media here in China are right up there with the best in the world, meaning whatever your style happens to be, they're always... Um, be something that fits you so and um, and it will land on your doorstep within one two three days since last year the old money style is on uh, the low-key color the clean cut designs which I prefer that <laughs> at the same time China chic is the hype for the young generation uh, inspire, uh, ins- uh, inspired by Different Chinese dynasties are very popular, like dress, makeup, accessories. The new Chinese style is getting more attention. Like uh, yesterday, I went to Hangzhou to be a part of a uh, Taobao event. Uh, Taobao is like Amazon abroad. So the most important part of the event is like a China Shake Show. The girls wearing the um, uh, Tang Dynasty dresses, and um, like last year, I organized. I also organized an event that gathered ladies from more than fifty countries to relieve the Dollar State back in Tang Dynasty. Involved more than twenty thousand participants on site and uh, more than hundreds of million viewers online. So. Really, the wow. new Chinese style is getting more attention. And I don't know if you meet someone in London that dressing like traditional Chinese costume. Yeah, costume. That's so interesting. So yeah. um, it's not so brand led because all the brands were so keen, as we've known over the last few years, mm-hmm. to, to brand China mm-hmm. and bring their particular individual style. So you're saying young women... Mm-hmm 
are really now more influenced by their own culture, their own cultural dress. Yes, and uh, they will the designer will design by old culture, makes the new like cut new uh in a modern way. Uh, in a modern way, yeah. I see. So they're adapting it. Yeah. And so when was the Tang Dynasty? What years was that? It's from the year of 618. 618. 618. Year. And for how long did it go on? Uh, so 618 AD. Uh, 289. Okay, so they're looking at very ancient style. Yeah, exactly. And what was the style then? That was very traditional. What would women wear? Well, actually, at Tang Dynasty, China is the most uh, powerful country in the world. So uh, in Tang Dynasty, people were very um, open mind. It's not very, you know, uh, uh, everything, everything close. close. It's just to show the ladies uh, confidence. Beautiful body. Very beautiful. Mm. Uh, you could show your shoulders, you could show your arms, legs, everything. So at that dynasty, uh, all the countries come to China to share the cultures at the dynasty. So actually, Chinese are very uh, proud for Tang Dynasty. Beautiful silks and different colors. Exactly. Long dresses. Yes. And uh, um, the, did they wear a lot of? Uh, wear a lot of accessories, and uh, the mm -hmm. Silk Road, Silk uh, Road, yes. and the Silk Road is from Tang, Tang Dynasty, because everybody wanted the Chinese silk. Yeah. Right. And they wore a lot of hairpins, jeweled hairpins at that time? Yes, uh, a lot of jewelry all around the body. So like, um, uh, uh, so at the Daughter's Day, uh, I just mentioned before, uh, the, uh, the ladies, they wear a lot of uh, jewelry and also paradox jewelry. <laughs> at oh, Daughter's really? Day, yeah. Not jade, not jade. Well, jade, peridot. no. no. Uh, yes, like me, for me, um, now I'm not wearing jade, but it's like a protection from, uh, it, it's like, um, more like a gift. Uh, my jade is from uh, the family's gift because they sent me, like, protect me the whole life. So I don't wear it now, but uh, I have jade. But actually, this yes. year, the jade come back. The jade style is on uh, because a lot of celebrities, they wear jade, yeah, they wear jade and jadeant uh, jewelry. Uh, so it uh, become more um, like fashionable. Uh, and I also asked one of my friends who is the second generation for jade business. She told me um, jade is amazing. But real, uh, but only to a certain age and with a certain life experience to be able to read and uh, and appreciate. And Jade collection not only need aesthetics but also strengths. For most of people to have aesthetic <laughs> strengths, basically have to be after thirty five year old. She told me that. Like for example, I told you the top celebrity Yang Mi, who is. Uh, <laughs> I don't think talk there took her age. She is a thirty-seven year old. Uh, for oh her God, so she's old. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> she's not old. <laughs> but <laughs> for her every recent public appearance, she wear a uh, new Chinese style and also the jade. So that brought because jade is is it's mm, very jade expensive. Is, is right. <laughs> Very expensive, but yeah. has always been associated with love and success in China, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And newborns are given jade, aren't they? Aren't they given a jade bangle as well, a newborn to protect them and actually, to have a good life? We, we prefer uh, to give the newborn a gold a gold bracelet or silver bracelet and um, mm -hmm. a, a, jin su. a golden lock. Golden lock. Golden lock, a golden and, lock or a, a silver lock. 
to the newborn. When I was in Shanghai,、mm-hmm. I went into a few jewelry stores, and they had like golden pigs. And、they said that was a sign of good luck for newborns. They had gave it gave newborns golden pigs. Oh really? Because in my、yeah. in my mind, the golden pig is for the wedding. You know, when、oh, it's for the wedding, a family. Oh, it's for yeah, the wedding. Yeah, it's for the wedding. Oh yeah, if、uh, if the newborn is a girl, maybe they will.、Oh, if、uh, the newborn is、uh, a girl, uh, or for、her. a wedding. Yeah, and for a wedding for good luck. And prosperity. That's so interesting. So you're saying, basically,、mm-hmm. young Chinese girls are going away from the traditional jade wearing、um, idea. That's for a slightly post post thirty <laughs>、um, women, and younger women、mm-hmm. are choosing that green color, but in peridot. Yeah,、uh, the peridot or、uh, amaros, I think. The green,、oh, but、uh, actually, but but actually, jade has、uh, so many different colors. There, there's white, there's green,、wow. there's purple, and、uh, yep. something、yellow. green, something yellow and green. So、uh, now、uh, there are more and more、uh, fashionable design jade in in the market. So some young, uh, some uh, the young generation could also buy the small piece of the jade, uh, for for like their jewelry.、Mm. So that's bringing them back into that culture. Yeah,、right. and that's interesting because if they're wanting to show their culture through dress、mm-hmm. and go back to the Tang Dynasty, I guess they're always going to want to to have jade as well. Yes. Yeah. Right. So we say we say that young generations are so. Love, uh, fall in love with uh the Chinese culture again. That's that's fantastic, isn't it? Um, because、yeah. there was a time, there was at the beginning when the brands were coming out and opening lots of stores, they were、mm-hmm. buying quite branded jewelry. And now, are they supporting Chinese designers and artists? Yeah. Uh. So, uh, like, um. Last year, I interviewed、uh, a lot、um, Chinese jewelry design、uh, designer. They all designed、uh, jade and also the、uh, gemstones. So now the、uh, Chinese designer they use、uh, jade、uh, or other color gemstones in their designs. They use both. And uh, like、um, jade is one of the main stones. Use it as a main stones. So more and more、uh, modern designs coming our market now.、Mm-hmm. Yes, and I see it in London too. Because when I go to、oh, really? the Royal College of Art or Central St Martins, there are a lot of Chinese students who are studying jewelry, and I presume、oh. they come back then and start brands once they've they've trained. So that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. So、that's、you have、so、a new、nice. generation of Chinese designers. A Wing Su, A Wing Su, A Wing Su. She's、uh, she's so cute, and、uh, she designs、uh, the jewelry as candy. Do you know?、Okay. Do you know her? <laughs> A Wing Su,、yes. A Wing Su. She she design her her design is very creative too. So I love、mm-hmm. her so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And what、um, what do you look for in a piece of jewelry? I mean, you've obviously got your emotional、um, attachment to those earrings, but when you're buying, a where do you go and buy, and b what do you look for?、Uh, the special meanings, as I said before, and beautiful main stones and creativity and craft,、uh, craftsmanship,、uh, all are all what I'm looking for because recently. Uh, part of my jewelry collection is the、uh, vintage jewelry, like from、uh, Burberry jewelry from the seventies and eighties, which are really hot now in the vintage market,、mm-hmm. because they represent an era of jewelry craftsmanship and are a record of culture. I think so. I love it so much, and.、Uh, For me, for me personally, I feel like I found my own style, so I don't have to change different styles of jewelry every day. So I prefer more meaningful jewelry, which I guess could re 
resonate with uh, lots of people. And I'm I'm, I'm in my thirties, so I prefer something simple but uh, significant. They should carry meanings. I could um, resonate with the jewelry that born before me, and I prefer this timeless connection. So that's why I love uh, vintage jewelry, and also like um, yeah, for buying jewelry online or face to face with jewelry is all possible. Um, because more and more jewelers in China have their own social media platform where, uh, where they share their, um, product, uh, production informations every day. Mm-hmm. So if you mm-hmm. spot on something you like, you can private message with them for a chat. And, uh, once you decide to buy, you can either deliver it, uh, they, sorry, they can't. Uh, they can either deliver it to your home or send it first to an independent appraisal service that's check it compensation and all the details before it goes to you. Uh, for Do special, they check the stones? Do they check yeah, the stones check the, as well? Yeah, yeah mm. exactly. Check the stones, diamonds and the gold, mm. everything, every details you can see on the pictures online. So where uh, whatever you buy, you can you can you can choose yourself. You can uh, tell a told a told he or her to send it directly to your home or to the independence service. And uh, for special customized pieces, I would meet the jeweler in person. But actually, lots of customized design can be sorted out online too. They will talk to you very every details. So you can see the model, you can see the draft and see the model and then to the uh, factory and then the, the final jewelry. And, and you can also talk to the jeweler to fix it a little bit, of course. Uh, so it's very, <laughs> uh, so it's very, it's very um, convenient for us to buy online. So you think people really are going to shops less? Yes, but if uh, personally, I really don't have that much time to go uh, the shops. But if I really want mm. something or it's really expensive, I will go to the shops to uh, feel it, touch it, and uh, really uh, face it. to face to yeah to try it. Yeah, I see. So, so over a certain amount. You'd go to the shop, but below a certain amount. But that's great. You've got these independent appraisals because then it's very safe buying on social media mm-hmm. or online. Yeah. Makes it very safe. Yeah. And where do you right. buy vintage? Where do you buy vintage from? Well, actually, I buy vintage online, and the, and the store, yeah, and the store is in Japan, because in Japan. a lot of <laughs> yeah, because. A lot of you know jewelers all over the world. They they all has their social media page on the red the, on the social media platform here in China. So I can I I only need to sit at home and uh, to see the jewelry all over the world. You know the red platform you described as the little red book that it's very important. Women use uh, the little red book as a like dictionary. You can chat everything. It's like a reference point that you can find any product that you're interested in. Yes, yes. So mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. girls love to use that to check everything. So uh, and uh, uh, the posts are so are are usually are more beautiful than the other platform. Mm-hmm. The visual one, the visual, the visual of the platform. So um, the girls love to use it to share their daily life, to mm. to to check everything. And the, the compliment, uh, uh, comments, 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 mm. and the comments are very friendly because most of the users are girls. So girls uh, helps girls, I think. So um, the uh, the whole environment of the platform is very you know comfortable for the girls so if okay. uh, like uh, if a brand come into china we 
will uh, suggest them to come into red first because uh, like if if the brand is for the girls, uh, you have to into some place that your users are there. But if you want to do something that let people, more people know about it, so you could go to Douyin or Kuaishou or other platforms that most of Chinese are there. So what is the store in Japan? What is that called? Uh, the Ginza. The Ginza. Oh, Ginza. The store okay. is in the Ginza. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's where you get your vintage. Yeah. <laughs> That's so interesting. But because, so yeah, because last three years I can't go, you know, I can't go abroad. So I, I can only um, watch uh, or see uh, the information online. So that's why I buy it online. And uh, I think the last three years, I mean, the pandemic mm-hmm. is uh, helps the online grow, the online business grows. Yes. So, yes. I think you're definitely more advanced at buying on social media platforms and Instagram because you buy very directly. Mm -hmm. And I think you've been involved in some of this, haven't you, Yang? Because you've founded some some platforms. Will you tell us how it works? Because we don't have it in exactly the same way. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, w- I would like to share our collaboration case with uh, Fully Gem- Gemstones back in December last year. We partnered up with a Chinese singer who's passionate about jewelry and customized over 150 sets of Peridot jewelry. What's the singer's name? Uh, Ji Jie. He's very famous 10 years before. And this year, he's more like a businessman. And uh, he do the live stream show uh, on Taobao. Just I mentioned, it's like the Amazon. And how many followers does he have? Four million followers, yes. So we did, um, we did the collaboration. Uh, the average piece range was between 350 to 500 pounds. So I, I could show you the, the jewelry. Oh, yes. So this is the ring. Uh, this is the ring. And this is the necklace, and uh, this is uh, the pair of the so ear. very pretty, very yeah. simple, easy to wear. Yeah, very yeah, very simple, and all the all the stones are uh, peridots. Mm-hmm. And so the and the other you stones. made how many pieces, and that sold out. Uh, yeah, th- so we prepared uh, 150 sets of the jewelry, and shockingly, they were sold out within the first minute, uh, first minutes of going live. Wow. So it's just sold out. But during this project, we designed the jewelry by knowing the KOL's fan demographics. After prototyping and getting everyone approval, we listed them for sale and only started production post-launch. Within around seven days, we managed to get certificates and deliver the items. Customers were generally receiving their uh, purchases within 10 days or so. So this kind of fast-paced jewelry right. supply chain business is yes, it's growing very fast. I think it's not only I mean the uh, supply chain uh, business is not only for the jewelry but also for so many different kind of uh, products uh, industries like uh, uh, yeah like uh, clothes like uh, makeup like skincare right so it's very fast here in China and it helps. Brands cut costs significantly where ensure customers receive what they want at a latent speed. And this approach has really shaken up the traditional way of doing business. Mm -hmm. And there's no waste because you're producing what you've sold. So there's no waste along the way. Right. Um, Yes. And we we always, uh, uh, and we also, uh, give them service to like the rain. We could give them the service to change the size of the rain for one time. So if they uh, wear the rain not 
not uh, not, not fit, fit them. not fit them. Mm -hmm. uh, they could also change for mm -hmm. uh, the, for the size one time. So, yeah. what else does DG um, sell on his platform? What other kind of products? Well, actually, he he sell the products all about his life. Oh, really? Like the clothes, like jewelry, yeah, like, and, and like, also he loves the jade. And like kitchenware, would he All sell kitchenware or makeup or? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, not makeup because he uh, he uh, he doesn't do the okay. makeup, but uh, like the bags, the clothes, the um, uh, the uh, the snacks, uh, snacks. Yeah, snacks. Uh, uh, yeah, and the snacks food. and food and uh, all kinds of categories. Yeah, all kinds of categories. That's amazing. So all his, his fans and followers really trust his judgment then. So they hitch on to a celebrity, they trust their judgment, and then they buy things mm -hmm. from him. And yeah. do they get a special discount from him or for following? What, what do they get? Actually, they have, uh, they have discount. So uh, like if I buy something from the um, celebrities, uh, the discount is uh, better than the official page of mm -hmm. the brand. So it's more like a branding and also they sell them product, uh, products. So it's good for the brand. I guess the nearest thing we have to uh, is Goop. I suppose the Gwyneth Paltrow site where she sells all kinds of things. And if people like Gwyneth Paltrow and follow her, they're going to presumably like the products she endorses. So I suppose that's the most similar, but it doesn't work on that very, very fast pace. And it's not mm -hmm. made specifically to be delivered to, to customers. Now, that's been a great success. So I guess what the next thing is that you do another collection with him. Uh, yes. And this year we will repeat this uh, business model uh, this year to uh, cooperate with more celebrities and uh, the okay. agency. Yeah. Okay, so do you have any in mind? I mean, are they all singers or actresses? I can't tell you. <laughs> How about what's yeah, yeah. That's a secret. Yeah, that's a secret. <laughs> but, um, Business secret. Yeah, that's a secret. But uh, yeah, we will do that this year. So okay. please look in for Well, when you know, you can tell us and then we can let everybody know. <laughs> Um, and do they have to be? Do they have to be passionate about jewelry, or does it matter? Are they just stylish people? I think it depends on the KOL because um, actually KOL is like uh, the buyer for their followers, so the followers believe uh, him or her. So uh, if if they very you know keen on the jewelry the followers will love it will buy it but if uh, he or she just uh, you know like uh, do it as a collaboration as a just simple collaboration the followers will not buy it so that's why okay. we uh, we do this collaboration very successful and uh, some there are of course some uh, collaboration fail failure for other brands so mm -hmm. choose the right KOL awesome. is very important. Right. And I guess this is very different when all the big brands were rushing to China. Mm -hmm. They would be selling to the Chinese in a very different way. They would just want them to come to their stores and buy traditionally. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that that's really not a very successful model anymore. From my partner or experiences, they all shut down the stores this year um, mm -hmm. because... Uh, now people love to buy online because the logistics here in China is very, you know, convenient. So we mm. um, we need some stores to uh, to touch the product, but not that much. So we only like we go to the restaurant. I see. We go to the restaurant, but we. We don't have time to shop it, actually. <laughs> really, that's true because, you know, China is You're so working busy. too hard. Yeah. <laughs> China is so busy. And so have any of the Western brands tried to, to find a celebrity influencer to work like this? Have any of them? Have Louis Vuitton, for instance? Oh, uh, yes. So around 2020... LVMH find and KOL to cooperate to post their new collection and to buy it. 
but around 2020, actually the uh, uh, live stream and uh, online shopping is not much developed with now. So at that time, mm -hmm. the collaboration was totally totally fail, <laughs> totally fail, um, not look good, not selling well, and not introduced very well. So they chose the wrong celebrity. Yeah, they chose the wrong celebrity. But actually, the celebrity was uh, is very well is doing very well on skincare now. So okay. if if the skincare pro, uh, brand to choose her to do the uh, live stream, it will be a success. But LVMH was, uh, I think, was uh, the bag and clothes, right? So fashion costume. Uh, yeah, fa uh, fashion clothes. So uh, she's not the right person. Not the right person. And have any of the Western brands tried this with jewelry through a? a uh, live stream platform western brand i don't think no. I, I don't think they yeah. i don't i don't think but i saw some uh, cooperation with uh, kl to do the um short video and you uh spot on the short video then um go to their official page Oh, okay. So not sell it and uh, not sell it directly because I know uh, the huge jewelry brand, they want to um, uh, make their customers to go down the stores. But um, actually the... But you're all too busy. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's not it's not goes very well, but for branding it's okay uh, because uh, the KOL's short video are so beautiful and very fashionable, and people love to watch. But if they spot on it and then uh, go to their official page, they 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 don't have the you know the heart will cool down for buying. That's a lovely way of saying it. The heart will cool down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right so um, so you have to keep them hot you have to keep them hot <laughs> yeah <instant>. right <laughs> so a lot of chinese jewelry brand uh jewelry brand mm. or like joe dafu Joe, Chou Tai Fu. Chou tai Fu, like Chou Tai Fu. Oh, Chou Tai Fu. I've been to many of their stores. Yeah, yes. they, they do a lot of uh, live stream collaboration online. Like okay. small pieces, uh, gold jewelry, necklace, uh, earring, rings. They did a lot. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. oh, they are always successful yeah. in China. Well, they're like a sort of um, a Chinese family jeweler, aren't they? Really, <laughs> Chow Tai Fook. <laughs> wow. I think. <laughs> also, which, uh, which, uh, which kind of style do you prefer? The, the... Which style do you? Uh... Yeah. Of of Chinese jewelry or jewelry, um, totally. China, uh, there's different. Uh, are are they different? Well, from? I I think so because of your your love of um jade mm -hmm. and we don't wear so much jade here mm -hmm. and pigs we don't wear so many <laughs> pigs. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that's just a piece to have and keep. It's like a christening present. Like we give children maybe their first little string of pearls oh. as a christening present mm -hmm. or a little coral bracelet mm -hmm. um, or something like that. We tend to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I like the fact that um, people there are so aware of the price of gold, the value mm -hmm. of gold. Right. And when I was um, visiting some child uh, Thai Fox stores, people came in mm -hmm. on a daily basis to weigh their gold and maybe trade some in, buy something different. They're very, very active, very actively buying jewelry and not sort of high jewelry, but just everyday jewelry. And I really love that. The jewelry stores, when I was visiting, this was a few years ago, maybe before the social media platforms and before COVID, they were very active, very buzzy, people coming in and out and... Um, and, and they had these brilliant um, um, sales tools where if you just put a piece of jewelry on it, it would give you all the information just like that. You know, the stone weight, the price, the, what was the content of the piece of jewelry. Very, very clever. But I guess your celebrities do that. 
Yeah, there's a cool saying going around among young generation in China. They say that a real Chinese awakening is all about buying gold. So you know, the young generation、mm-hmm. love gold very much. Well, they 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 bet on a sh- good sure bet as the gold price goes up and up. So they're smart.、Um, so really, I think you know the message here is that people coming to China really need to understand the Chinese market because it works differently. Right. And you can so easily get it wrong.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, people obviously are very loyal to their particular celebrity they've chosen. So if you follow Chi Ji, I actually I. I I don't, I don't follow Ji、uh, Ji Jie, but I'm、yeah. a friend of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not tell him that. You better start following him. <laughs>、um, but. I guess if you are very loyal to him, obviously not you, Yang. You're not loyal to yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Other, his other loyal, <laughs> his loyal followers. I guess they don't swap around celebrities. If you're with one, do you just follow them, or do you follow quite a few? Do people in general follow a few celebrities? Well, actually,、uh, people followed a lot KOL because they always can find. Some like a similar feeling with different KOL. Like makeup, I can follow one、uh, for a、uh, KOL, and for the styling, I can follow the other. So every different fields, there are a lot of you know a good a、uh, good KOL in that、uh, major. So. And、uh, right. for the loyalty, yeah, for the loyalty, like Gigi's follower is very loyalty to him because,、uh, mm-hmm. as I mentioned, he did the live stream, uh, like five years ago, and so so far the follower is from the very beginning, uh, to until now, so they very believe, uh, Gigi, but now there are some、uh, KOL merging. merging. So they just,、uh, you know, come to the,、um, come to the. <laughs> Excuse me. There is always new KOL coming all the time,、uh-huh. so people will select from different、yeah. KOL. They want loyal only for one person. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess you know they're going to follow people with the most followers, and you have to have a certain amount of followers. Otherwise, some of the people won't want to sell their products because they know they have to reach a certain amount of people. Actually, there are some very small KOL, but if、uh, if the KOL is very very professional on the field, like on makeup or jewelry, even though he or she has thousands of followers, it makes sense. So it's、okay. so it's not about the amount of the followers, but、uh, it's very. About、uh, how they present it. Yeah. Do you think Chinese young Chinese girls、mm-hmm. would follow a Western celebrity like? Of、that? course, I love Taylor Swift. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If she suddenly said, "You have to buy this shade of lipstick, or you have to buy this ring," would you buy that? Probably yes. Well, she's rich enough. I don't think she needs to do that. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs>、um, so they would. So they. Yeah. So they like a celebrity,、uh, I think celebrity has two can. One can is she or he like a、uh, uh, a model that、uh, uh, she or he like a、uh, dream life. You want to be.、Uh, you want to live their lives. So one kind of.、Um, Uh, celebrity is like that, and the other kind of celebrity is like、uh, they really have the they really professional in some fields. So、okay. if they like, if I am a designer, I just、uh, introduce all the designs I've done. So the followers are very easily to believe they're professional and will buy it very. Even, mm-hmm. I think, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's different. And all these celebrities, are they all on one major platform? Well, no. Actually, there are Douyin, Kuaishou, Red, Weibo, Taobao, Taobao. Okay, 
So is is red one of the biggest? Well, actually, Douyin is the biggest, but most users of red are girl, are 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 women. So now brand love to be in red first. I see. Yeah. And is there a a a, a young Chinese designer that you think we should all be looking at their work at the moment? Is there someone that you you really like? I love.、Uh, They are not young.、Uh, a lot、okay. of、uh, Chinese jewelry designer. They are more and more famous, not only in China but also abroad. I I like、mm -hmm. such as、uh, Sun Qing, Hu Wenyuan, and Ou Wenxu. Each with their own styles because、uh, their styles are so different. They are all design something very traditional and very、uh, and something very fashionable and modern. So I love them, uh, so much. Be uh, like uh, Sun Qian, she is uh so good at design something gold, with uh other gemstones. So it's very beautiful. Are there any sort of Chinese, um, part of Chinese culture that that you adhere to that you think is important for you? In in dress or jewelry. Or lifestyle. First is that I mentioned before is the gold. You know, young generation loves gold very much, and it's called Chinese awakening. So everyone buys gold, and the other one,、um, it's、uh, in fact myself、uh, very much is、uh, to drink tea. So China has <laughs> yeah. So China has a、yeah. lot of、uh, has a long history about.、Um, You know the tea, tea culture, culture, tea culture. So, uh, like we have a very traditional ways to drink tea, the kung fu tea, and very fashionable like milk tea. I think, uh, in all <laughs> the China Chinatown all over the world, they have the milk tea stores. So it's very, uh, fashionable. Modern. Yeah, modern in the young generation. We do have a tea culture in common. That's for sure.、Mm -hmm. We drink a lot of tea over here. We call it builder's tea. So I don't know why, but it's a, it means you like it really strong. So you get that sort of caffeine hit. So all you taste is tea. But maybe we need some flavors in that. When I come Yang, we'll have a a tea ceremony together. Ah,、uh, yeah. In China, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so looking forward to that. Um, and so, Yang, what new trends do you see coming through in jewelry?、Uh, well, in terms of jewelry aesthetics and craftsmanship, I'm no、uh, expert. But what I can see is that、um, with、uh, the development of global logistics and social medias, there's going to be a whole new game for jewelry brands. Right from how they establish themselves, the channels they use to sell. Uh, uh, to the way they get quick feedback on designs, it's all set for a major shakeup. So it's、um, totally different now. So yeah, I think、uh, this is、uh, what I、uh, what I see are、uh, the new trends on the. I think on different industries trends. So in a way, then buyers are going to set the trends more than the fashion designers, more than designers, because they're going to be asking for what they want. Yes,、yeah, so they'll be、um, pushing the design into to what they want rather than designers coming up with new ideas. Is that what you're saying? Actually,、uh, I think last month I、uh, I met、uh, Stephen Webster. He's he's been a guest on our podcast. A oh, really? Of times. <laughs> well, I'm so、yes. looking forward. And、uh, you know, her designs is all about、uh, Western culture,、uh, the Seven Dali scenes, which I love them so much. I in I interviewed him、uh, in, Shanghai in Shanghai because、uh, he had a a design、uh, collaborate with a fully gemstones. So I interviewed him, and he knows a lot. Of、uh, Chinese culture,、mm. so it's、Does、very、he? yeah, it's very interesting. And do you see any of that culture coming through into his designs? Yes, he designed a lot, like、um, a ring of him. His、uh, the seven deadly sin is a pile of coin. 
So abroad, the coin is seven, but in China, uh, there are eight, uh, eight coins on the ring because in Chinese culture, it means rich. Eight means rich. So he put eight coins on the ring. And uh, this year is the year of uh, the dragon. So mm -hmm. he designed a ring with a pearl and uh, a dragon. So uh -huh. he really knows <laughs> a lot with Chinese culture. Make Chinese uh, more like um, his design. So I think mm -hmm. it's very interesting that, you know, a creativity design that it could um, uh, break the culture gap. So even though the seven deadly sins is from the Western, we all love it in the East. So okay. I think the, well, the, the creativity is makes sense. So uh, uh, we, we, we will love the good design, okay. but the, how they produce, uh, how they produce the jewelry, the, the produce, uh, the production, the, mm, the production, uh -huh. the production will change by the new technique. The sales and delivery. Yeah, right. You, you like good design, but the sales and delivery is changing hugely. Yes, and uh, and that that is something that's coming as a new way to buy. Yes, yes. So when you're doing your collaborations, um, do you go to um, choose the stones? Do you go to a mine to choose the stones? Oh, yes. Where do you go? <laughs> I went to the Pyridot mine last year around July. July. Around July. So that's why I think that's the most reason why I love Pyridot because um, I went to uh, the Changbaishan mine was my very first time to visit a mine. The, ver the environment was so nice because before that visit, all I know about mine is very is something very dangerous. But after this trip, I do believe the whole process of Peridot is very safe and secure because the mine is just flat and you can walk in and Peridot is all around you shining. Um, like stars. Could you see it in the rock? Yeah, on the rock. So it's very funny how I seem to have developed a special bond with Peridot after this trip. Because when I walk through the mine, I marvel at the feeling of traveling back in time. When I see all of these materials worth gathered together and a no number of billions of years ago, and how much pressure, temperature, time it took for us to see it. Now, it's kind of interesting to have this kind of empathy, something that I didn't have uh, before looking at all the gorgeous cut gem and jewelry. Not only with mm -hmm. all these great feelings. And what is the country like around the mine? Is it, it's in the mountains, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a mountain. Is it beautiful? Very, very beautiful very. around grain. Oh, the forest, mm -hmm. the mines in the forest. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes almost an hour from mm -hmm. the city center. city center to the mine. But it's worth to go, <laughs> really. <laughs> Did you see, aren't there... Um, tigers in the Changbai mountains uh, no of course not <laughs> <laughs> there is something there yeah there are there are tigers on the mountain but not that that place because it's very dangerous so i think they are protected <laughs> in the in the field so if you worked with another stone would you go and visit that mine as well yeah, I would love to mm. because it's very interesting. It's very interesting to find how the stones, uh, where is the uh, stones and how it forming. It forming, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how yes. it cut then shine on the jewelry. So it's very interesting trip. And I would love to more. And I guess um, that makes it easier for people to talk about the stones on um, when they're doing their live streams. 
So do you think um, G.J. Um, should go and visit the mine when yeah, he's course, selling? You know, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, kind of uh, live stream is for uh, finding how the products um, make. Uh, yeah, produced. Pr uh, produced. Like uh, if a live stream is selling the clothes, they will uh, stream, live stream the whole process uh, of the whole process uh, yes they will like the whole process like uh, designing like the producing producing mm -hmm. and then coming to the market. market so they will live streaming the whole uh oh i see the whole story yeah yes, yes. so that makes uh followers more um a build, build up yeah, build up their mm -hmm. yeah and confident in what they're buying yeah that's very interesting. Well, we look forward to seeing more of what you do. <laughs> and thank you very much indeed for sharing this um, little glimpse into Chinese style and the jewelry industry in, in China. Thank, thank you. you very Thanks much, for yeah. this um, uh, questions. And I really have a great time to talking with you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for listening for this and other episodes of If Jewels Could Talk. Please go to our website, carolwilton.com slash podcasts. Please share it any way you can. And we love to have a rating or a comment. We're also on YouTube. You can find us there. And you can find me at Carol Wilton on Instagram. Join me again in two weeks for the next Jeweled Nugget. And I'm going to hand the floor over to you. I'm so grateful for your support and for everyone listening and our If Jewels Could Talk community growing around the world. And I want to hear from you, please. Anything you want to know, any questions from the previous episodes, anything about jewelry designers, stones, diamonds, what's happening, modern jewelers, just like anything, um, I would love to hear. And I'm going to answer them on our special end of season finale. Not that we're going away for long, um, but get those questions in. And thank you for listening. Bye-bye. If Jewels Could Talk with Carol Woolton is produced by Natasha Cowan, music and editing by Tim Thornton, graphics by Scott Bentley, illustration by Geordie Labanda. You can find our sponsors at foolygemstones.com and me at carolwilton.com.